Good day, everyone. My name is Dennis Shushin. I would like to thank the organizers of the Molten Conference for the opportunity to present our research in a virtual mode. The topic of the presentation is thermodynamic modeling of molten phases for the parametology of lead. The work is done in Parametology Innovation Center of the University of Queensland with funding provided by the Consortium of Lead and Copper Producing Companies and the Australian government. We will talk about the importance of lead processing, discuss the fundamental chemistry of the process, demonstrate the examples of thermodynamic calculations run by FactSage software, and have a look at the principles involved in the development of large thermodynamic databases. The perception of lead production as environmentally problematic industry resulted in a decline of the production capacity in some regions of the world, while increasing significantly in other regions. Without the public support, companies prefer to shift the production elsewhere instead of inventing, investing in modern technology. The consequence is a loss of infrastructure, which can be used in recycling of critical elements. Lead as an element possesses unique properties which make it as a, a, a good carrier for a variety of other valuable metals, as shown on the slide. The transition towards renewable energy and fossil-free economy will take large amounts of base metals as well as critical metals. Experts in Europe recognize the issue and work towards educating the public and decision makers. Another consequence is a lack of talent in the primatological industry, which slows down the implementation of modern digital technologies. The work in Parametological Innovation Center is focused on providing fundamental research in chemistry of complex systems. The results are being used for educational purposes, planning of new processes, and improving the stability and efficiency of existing operational units. This slide shows the concept of integrated parametological process. Each unit is important. The synergy between the processes increases the recovery of metals and decreases the contamination of environment. In Parasearch, a single thermodynamic database is being developed for all processes. It is based on fundamental studies and is not tuned to any specific furnace or operating conditions. Supporting the consistency among predictions for a very wide range of conditions is one of the main challenges. Valuable materials such as recycled electronic and electrical equipment batteries can be introduced into the process and benefit from the existing infrastructure. High temperatures achieved in copper and lead smelting can be used to decrease the energy expenses and need for manual separation of recycled materials. Thus, new materials that were not economically viable to process can be brought into the circular economy. Additional investment is required into, into the gas cleaning and water treatment systems when new materials are introduced. A support from fundamental research is necessary to predict the distribution of elements and changes in the slag chemistry. Without the infrastructure in developed countries, recycled electronic materials end up in the parts of the world where labor safety and environmental protection is non-existent. They are still processed, but in the most damaging way. Let's now discuss the chemical fundamentals of the lead processing. Primary lead smelting is chosen for illustration. The main goal of the first step in primary lead smelting is the removal of sulfur. This is achieved by an oxidizing smelting. A series of exothermic reactions provide the heat for the process. Efficient smelting requires small amount of fuel. The chemical nature of lead does allow conversion of lead sulfide directly into lead metal, as shown on the predominance diagram in the top right corner. But in practice, direct lead production results in high losses of PBO in slag. PBO in slag need to be reduced. Thus, the oxidation usually proceeds all the way to PBO and follows by the reduction step of PBO back into PB metal. Thus, the secondary goal is to create the material for efficient reduction of lead oxide in the next stage. All the technologies use the sintering and partial melting into slag. Modern technologies use almost complete melting with the formation of slag. Molten slag can be cast into suitable shape for reduction or processed in the same furnace in batches. Lime and silica fluxes are added to decrease the melting temperature of slag. To name a few complications of the process. The formation of stable solid solutions such as phenyl and melilite 
evaporation of lead and zinc, followed by the formation of large quantities of sulfate dust, formation of copper-rich matte phase, which may need processing as well, elsewhere, hot corrosion of refractory walls and lances. During the next stage, the main goal is to reduce lead oxide and produce metallic lead bullion. Traditionally, carbon is used as a reductant. Energy to maintain reactions in the molten state is provided either by burning a portion of coke, as in the case of lead blast furnace, or by using electricity, as in electric furnace. Secondary goal is to partially separate copper from lead in the form of mat. Sulfur comes from coals and sometimes added into the system as pyrite. Complications of the process include evaporation and recondensation of lead and zinc, forming internal recirculation within the furnace, reducing the working volume. Inefficient reaction between blast and feed, the channeling effect, formation of accretions, entrainment of lead metal in the slag. The lead bullion produced at the reduction stage typically contains significant amounts of copper, sulfur, arsenic, antimony, and tin. In future, even more of these impurities are expected, particularly copper. A good thing about lead is a very low melting temperature. At low temperature, the solubility of these impurities decrease to low level. Much of copper can be precipitated out in the form of sulfide or arsenide. They both may separate out in liquid or solid form depending on temperature. Liquid sulfide is usually referred to as matte. A mixture of solid sulfides and arsenides are usually called dross. For certain compositions, even copper antimony and copper tin compounds may form, but their solubility is higher. The review of reactions gives an idea about the phases that need to be modeled in order to describe the process. Most important phases are liquid slag, matte, metal, and spice. The slag is modeled in a separate solution from other three. It is assumed to be an ionic liquid. This means that metal cations always have anions next to them as first neighbors. When sulfur dissolves in slag, it also assumed to be in ionic form. Oxygen and sulfur compete for being next to cations and they have preferences. The model does not allow deviation towards excess metal or oxygen from the stoichiometry determined by charge. What model allows is the description of second nearest neighbor short range ordering between acidic silica cations and basic cations, such as calcium or zinc. This has a major impact on the entropy of mixing. The solution for the matte metal spice phase is not designed to model the second nearest neighbor short range ordering, but it is designed to describe transitions from metallic to ionic behavior of some liquids. For instance, liquids in the lead sulfur or iron sulfur systems are continuous from metal to sulfide and even further. In copper sulfur, sulfur system, there is a miscibility gap between metal and matte. Oxygen can dissolve in these liquids having effect on miscibility gaps. Modeling miscibility gaps is rather difficult. Generalized model for slag matte metal spice would be too complex and involve many miscibility gaps merging only at very specific conditions, which are far from industrial operations. Important solid phases such as phenyl and melilite also form extensive solutions and described using the compound energy formalism. This slide shows examples of equipment used for the smelting stage. Top submerged lance furnaces, Kivset, which resembles flash smelting furnace for copper and nickel, and a series of cylindrical furnaces with bottom or side location of two years. The differences between them are in the organization of contact between oxygen and the feed. Efficient contact is needed to promote the kinetics of the process, but overall chemical reactions are essentially the same. The sinter machine are not shown. They, are, they have low efficiency and environmental performance and are being gradually replaced. Fact stage calculation for the smelting stage is shown on the screen. An input of materials with overall mass of 100 tons, 1,000 tons per day consists of concentrate and small amount of recycled printed circuit boards and nickel-rich battery cathode material. Air, oxygen, and some fuel are used. Silica and lime fluxes are added. Calculations were organized using Excel with macro language and fact stage with internal macro language. The database used in this study can also work with other thermodynamic products from FactSage family, such as ChemUp, ChemSheet, and Simusage. 
Equilibrium conditions are assumed in the smelter. Main products are slag and gas. Somewhat unusual conditions are selected to demonstrate the potential of producing the matte phase on the smelting stage. This may have advantage to remove copper, silver, and gold at earlier stage in the process. The drawback is that more reducing conditions are required, which results in high vapor pressure of lead. The reactor gas is cooled down in the second equilibrium calculation to form dust. The dust is predominantly lead sulfide, which uh, lead sulfate, which has to be recycled back to the reactor. Higher dust turnover is expected when furnace operates at more reducing conditions. Also, liquid slag contains solid phases, spinel and melilite. In other words, it operates under liquidus. Lower temperature and saturation with solids may slow down the corrosion of refractories, but the furnace needs high agitation to prevent the formation of accretions. Percent solids need to be controlled below certain level to allow efficient skimming of slag. Thus, in addition to good thermodynamic predictions, advanced temperature measurements and flexible fluxing control may be needed to operate the furnace safely under liquidus. The heat balance is also calculated using the enthalpy difference between the product and the inputs of the furnace. Extra equilibrium calculations are used to find enthalpies of inputs. The effect of blast amount is demonstrated on the present slide. The main, the main process parameter that routinely measured in smelting is the concentration of lead in slag. It is shown using the black line and increases with increasing blast amount. Smaller blast amount results in the formation of matte and or metal phases. Exact proportions of matte, metal, and slag for every blast to feed ratio is determined by many factors, mainly by the proportion of lead, copper, iron, zinc, and sulfur in the feed. Smaller blast amount also results in higher partial pressures of PB and PBS, leading to larger dust turnover. Higher blast amounts reside, results in higher stability of spinel, but lead oxide itself is an efficient fluxing agent. The fluxing counteraction of PBO against the increasing stability of spinel results in local minimum of percent spinel near the base case. Melilite exhibits maximum at these conditions. Blast amount have above optimal levels result in unnecessary further oxidation of Fe2 plus into Fe3 plus which will require additional amounts of coke during the reduction stage. This is shown uh, on the bottom left diagram with the red line. The FeO stoichiometry in slag increases from 1.2 at the base case to almost 1.5. The bulk composition of slag in the base case is projected onto two different diagrams. Left diagram is good to analyze the effect of silica and lime fluxes. The slag at 1170 is below liquidus. It must be mentioned that fluxing during the smelting stage is often targeted to provide full liquid slag at the next reduction stage. The reduction stage can be less tolerant to the presence of solids. For instance, in the blast furnace, the goal is to settle the slag and metal layers in the hearth, so agitation is avoided. The right diagram is suitable to understand the effect of zinc to iron ratio in the feed on liquidus of slag. The slag from the smelting stage is transferred to the reduction stage. The blast furnace is considered to be very efficient in reducing the final concentration of lead and slag, but is being criticized for burning coke as a source of heat. Blast furnace requires solid slag briquettes to operate, and some energy is lost when slag is cooled down and remelted again. Kivset furnace uses electricity to maintain the slag in a liquid form. There is no need to solidify the slag. It flows from one semi-closed chamber to another. The furnace can process complex recycled materials since additional heat can be provided. The formation of different types of accretions pose significant challenge in operating the Kivset furnace. In some operation, operations, electric furnaces are used separately as individual process units. They are not shown on the slide. In the case of TSL, the reduction can be conducted in the same furnace as smelting in a batch mode. Even further, zinc fuming can be performed still in the same furnace. This is not shown on the slide. Bottom blown reduction furnace gained popularity in China. There is not much information about the operation practices in open literature. From the thermodynamic point of view, high partial pressure of PB and zinc are expected, and it is not clear from literature how this is treated. 
Historically, the blockage of two years has also been a problem for these type of furnaces. Fact stage calculations for the reduction stage is shown uh, on the slide. One equilibrium calculation represents the hard zone. Second equilibrium calculation represents the heat exchange and recondensation of PB and, zin and uh, zinc. This happens when hot gases from the hearth meet incoming feed. More complex models uh, dividing the blast furnace into several temperature zones are possible, but are not practical for these demonstration calculations. The outputs of the furnace are slag, metal, and gas. This slide shows the sensitivity analysis for the effect of cold plus blast amount. The main conclusions are the reduction of blast amounts of PBO and slag require increasingly more coal. Partial pressures of lead and zinc are very high, so gas need to be treated to bring them back into the furnace. In blast furnace, they recondense when in contact with feed from the top of the furnace. Channeling and high temperature at the top of the furnace result in higher concentration of PB and zinc escaping into the off gas. The mat phase does not form in this series of calculations since the temperature is high and significant portion of copper has been removed on, at the smelting stage. Phase equilibria for the lead blast furnace slag are shown on the slide. The correct uh, calcium to silica ratio is important to keep the slag fully liquid. The formation of willemite limits the maximum zinc to iron ratio. Present slide shows the results of uh, one equilibrium calculation to form a mixture of sulfides and arsenides from liquid bullion. Concentrations of copper, sulfur, and arsenic decrease significantly. This process is often called copper drossing. A large amount of lead metal is trapped in the crust of solid uh, dross forming at the top of the vessel. When separated, dross is often remelted to get out liquid lead. Lead metal goes back uh, to the first stage of drossing, while matte and spice are sold to those companies who are willing to process them. This slide shows the proportion of phases and concentrations of elements in the lead metal as a function of temperature. Equilibrium conditions are assumed. Antimony and tin are removed so, to much lesser extent under these conditions. Since lead still contains 0.48% of copper, the next stage would be the addition of elemental sulfur or pyrite which form even more copper sulfide and bring the concentration of copper to much lower levels. A series of steps is then follows, which are out of scope of the current presentation, but they allow to recover other valuable metals and to purify lead. Present slide shows the overview of three stages. Main outputs are off gas streams uh, from the smelting and reduction stages. The first is typically processed to make sulfuric acid the second may contain carbon monoxide, which is a source of energy. Other products are liquid mat produced at the smelting stage, slag from the reduction stage, dross, and lead metal. The diagrams represent partitioning of elements among these streams. Copper, silver, and gold are concentrated in mat and can be transferred to copper converters. Lead will form oxide and they should be sent back uh, with other lead containing materials from the copper smelter to uh, lead processing. Presence of arsenic and bismuth may require extra cleaning of copper in an old furnace using, for instance, soda slag. But in a diluted form, the presence of these deleterious impurities is tolerated during copper electro refining. Zinc in the slag can be recovered by fuming. The remaining clean slag can be suitable for construction purposes. Research on the leachability of slags is required to make sure it is safe. Dross can be processed as well. The present slide summarizes the principle which we try to follow when developing a large dynamic database. First, a single database is produced for all non-ferrous application. It is not <coughs> tuned for specific furnace or process conditions. Fundamental equilibrium laboratory control studies are used. Model parameters for the solution phases are obtained by CALFAD method, that is, activity distribution data, phase diagram data, calorimetric, and uh, crystallographic measurements are all used simultaneously. The CALFAD method is widely accepted and used by many research groups. The next level of complexity is to apply the same principle across all the related chemical systems. Since the solution models contain only binary and ternary parameters with very few exceptions, the multi-component data should be taken into account in the optimization process. Also, the experiments are designed to fix the values of those parameters, 
which cannot be resolved accurately from existing literature data. Thus, the whole database cannot be practically developed in one series of optimizations. It is often necessary to go back to already assessed subsystems and change the parameters because experimental experiment reveals inconsistencies in the multi-component system. The result is the wave of changes in model parameters that need to be propagated through the whole database, increasing the agility of the database and increasing the frequency of iterative evolutionary changes is one of the priorities in PyraSearch. Present slide illustrates the concept of vertical and horizontal integration of the subsystems. Only base system is shown without minor elements. A cluster of zinc alumina contained orange blocks represent experimental and modeling work performed in recent months, which was triggered by the analysis of quenched industrial slag samples from real operating lead smelter. Model parameters were optimized using laboratory controlled experiment. It is tempting to collect the industrial operation data, comp compare it directly to equilibrium predictions, and then optimize model parameters to fit industrial data. But our experience shows that such approach is not acceptable. The fluctuating nature and incomplete analysis of process streams in the realities of pyrometallurgical plants usually does not allow to resolve the material balance for every element. This creates distortions in thermodynamic calculations, which are independent from the accuracy of the model. Typically, compositions are measurement, measured, sometimes even for minor elements, but not the masses of flows. The recirculating dust is always very hard to account for. Oxygen partial pressures are typically not measured. Using blast to feed ratio directly uh, usually results in unrealistic equilibrium oxygen partial pressures. Oxygen efficiency or flow calibration parameters have to be introduced. Temperature measurements necessarily necessary for slag liquidus can be 100 degrees off if the term thermometers are not calibrated or blocked by dust. Industrial slags are slow cooled instead of quenching, which gives time to react with oxygen and segregate. XRF used routinely for measuring compositions, but does not allow to distinguish between the true solubility and entrainment. In a view of these challenges, the preferred strategy is to simulate industrial conditions using multi-component laboratory experiments. If the model predictions do not reproduce the result of multi-component experiments, gradually simplify the system and isolate the problem, trying to find binary eternal parameters, which need to be re-optimized in a view of new data. Following slides show examples of published research targeting different aspects of lead pyrometallurgy. This diagram is important for lead blast furnace and zinc fuming. It shows the conditions of formation of zincite spinel melilite and vilimite under reducing conditions. These diagrams represent the conditions of mat formation, both of lead smelting and uh, in reduction. The distribution of copper and lead between mat and slag are shown as functions of PBO in slag. Here are the results of research of distribution of minor elements between slag and lead metal. These publications were focused uh, on copper drossing conditions. The diagrams show the solubility of copper sulfides and arsenides as a function of temperature and proportion of copper, sulfur, and arsenic. Similar diagrams for antimony and tin are, are in development. Since I mentioned that quaternary parameters are exceptional in the database, present slide shows where they are necessary. Indirect evidence showed that additions of copper, alumina, and magnesium to phyllized base slags reduce the concentration of sulfur and sulfidic solubility of copper and nickel in slag. Special parameters were necessary to describe the effect. The physical meaning of these parameters are the disrupt disruptive effect of sulfur anions on the second nearest neighbor uh, ordering between acidic and basic oxides. Similar parameters for lead and zinc were expected, but available literature data could not be used to accurately fix them. In the case of PB, experiment was designed to equilibrate PBO SiO2 slag, solid lead sulfide, and lead metal, and to measure the concentration of sulfur in slag. For zinc, different type of experiment was used, which is prepared for publication. To conclude, lead processing infrastructure is impl important for future metallurgy and economy, but it seems to uh, evolve, but it needs to 
evolve to address the concerns of the society. Computational and digital communicational tools have exploded in capabilities over the last decades, but these technologies have not been fully transferred to pyrometallurgy. We see significant opportunities to use large thermodynamic databases for education, exploration, and optimization. We would like to express our gratitude to, to industrial sponsors and Australian government for providing the support for fundamental research.